Earlier, I spoke to Todd Ruffner. He's an advocacy associate with the Project on Middle East Democracy. We talked about the controversy surrounding Iran's pick for U.N. ambassador and how U.S. lawmakers are reacting. Iran, as we've seen, has been one of the few bipartisan issues for our Congress. Uh, there's sort of a, a lot of opposition to it, and seeing it as a slap in the face is, is not surprising in any way. So uh, I, I, I suspect that most uh, any sort of slight like this from Iran will be perceived that way, and certainly Iran is still causing trouble. There's, there's no disputing that they've uh, been counterproductive to a lot of uh, the U.S. interests in, in the region, and um, I think that'll continue to be the case. Let me ask you about the United Nations, though. The United States does have a, a treaty in place with sure. the U.N. where they really can't, uh, right. they don't get a veto on this, sure. do they? I mean, where does it go from there? I mean, even if they say we don't want them, that yeah. doesn't necessarily mean much, does it? No, I, and it, it shouldn't. I, I think, as far as I understand, the U.S. is legally obligated to, to grant visas to U.N. ambassadors and officials. So it's a, it's a bit of a tricky issue, and I'm, I'm afraid of sort of the, the precedent that this will send. And it's also troubling because... The, both, both the White House and the State Department and Congress have been reticent in the past to deny visas to people who have proven egregious human rights re records from uh, other countries. And this has been sort of a, a political issue that uh, both my organization and many organizations have pushed for to deny visas to human rights violators, and they've not been willing to in the past. And this sort of seems like a, an odd time to choose to do so. And so it's a, for some of us in the human rights community and, and sort of more generally, it's sort of a troubling precedent to sense that they will you know, do this, take this sort of step for Iran, but not for, for other countries who have much worse records. Let me get your final thoughts mm -hmm. uh, on, on the talks themselves, sure. the nuclear talks, very important. Yeah. Does this do anything with those, do you think? Uh, it, it definitely could. It could hurt the confidence, I think. I think there's some negotiations that are supposed to restart this week, and it, it could definitely hurt that and sort of roll back some of the confidence, and confidence that's been built. Uh, but hopefully this is something we can sort of uh, push forward and push through, and uh, some productive talks can, can take place this week, and hopefully it doesn't derail uh, things in a, in a larger way. Let's, uh, let me ask one final question, which sure. is about uh, Obama's foreign policy, yeah. which a lot of people think is all over the place, sure. and uh, the not anticipating an what was going to happen in Ukraine, not mm -hmm. necessarily dealing very well with uh, Syria. Mm -hmm. A lot of these issues, um, you know, doing the pivot to Asia, but not right. necessarily. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism. What does this say about his foreign policy, do you think? Well, look, the, the Obama administration deliberately chose to take on some of the biggest issues, the, the, the peace process, Iran negotiation, things like that. And unfortunately, that's happened at the expense of a lot of issues where they could make an impact. Uh, for The best example is Tunisia, where a, a little bit of effort, uh, at least in my opinion, could go a long way and, and really push that country in, in, a, in a really, or you know, help push that country in a, in a productive direction for the rest of the Middle East and, and sort of the world at large. And unfortunately, they've sort of put all their eggs in these few baskets, and uh, they're incredibly challenging issues that'll be incredibly hard to succeed at. And at the expense of some of the issues that, that they really could have some foreign policy successes, uh, they've sort of, you know, left those um, unattended. And so the foreign poli their foreign policy is sort of much maligned because of uh, sort of the challenges that they've, they've taken on, and I think that'll continue to be the case. All right. Thanks so much for yeah, your insight. Yeah, my pleasure.